Hi, I'm Dr. Francis, a world life, world life, a world life and living and dead. Huh? Hi, I'm Dr. Francis, a world renowned wildlife nutritionist. You may not have heard of me, but your mud skipper sure has. So let's talk about understanding pet food ingredients and labels today. They don't really make noise, they just open their mouths really wide with their teeny tiny eyes and they look foolish. So, you just got a new pet and you're not sure what to feed it. So you walk into your neighborhood pet shop, you're walking, you're walking, and then you're in there, ooh, hi. And then you see you are assaulted with racks and racks and racks of different brands and different types of food for dog or cat, whatever you have. How do you know which to choose? All of them say they're the best. All of them say, pick us. All of them are saying, we will make you and your pet happier. And all of them are on sale or have a promo or something. So how do you choose between all of these hundreds of choices? Well, it's important to understand that some parts of this packaging is regulated and most of it is not, and it's pure marketing and is meaningless. So let's go through the bags together so we can actually find out what is mandatory, what is legislated, and what is just fluff. So when you're looking at the front of the packaging, whether it's a canned food or whether it's a bag of kibble or whatever, there are only five things that are regulated on the front. So you have the name of the brand, you have the flavor that they're actually using, you have the species that it's for, you have the life stage that it's for, and you have the weight of the bag. That's it. Nothing else on the bag, which is pretty much 80% of the bag, is regulated. So they can even use photos to deceive you into making you think this looks tasty. They can have photo of like a nice grilled steak or pork ribs or whatever, when in fact that doesn't need to be in there at all. But there are some lingo rules that are attributed by AFCO. So as long as the food is AFCO compliant, which is most of the American foods, maybe not the European ones, but there are some rules here. Now these rules will blow your mind. Welcome to the secret of pet food. So if it says something like chicken entree or recipe or formula, there only needs to be 25% of that ingredient in the food. And that is pre-production weight, which means you may think there's 25%, but that was the fresh chicken before they dehydrated it and put it into the kibble. So in reality, it could only be seven or 8% minimum. So if you have a nice photo of chicken and it says chicken formula, actually there may be a lot of other ingredients and a lot of other proteins in there too. It's just what they choose to say. So you need to read your ingredients no matter what, because even though it says beef entree, there could be tons of other meats in there. And if you see the word and, this is another warning bell, because if it says chicken and rice, then altogether it has to add up to at least 25% pre-production weights of the ingredients. And each individually needs to be at least 3% pre-production rates. So if it says chicken and rice, there could literally be just 1% of actual dried chicken, which would be around 3% of the wet weight. Isn't that crazy? And if they use the word with, like chicken entree with venison, you may think, oh wow, venison is fancy, venison is nutritious, venison is expensive, let me get this one. But when they add the word with, then there only needs to be 3% of that ingredient pre-production weight. So again, it could be as low as 1% dried venison in there. A way that they can trick you is they can say adult formula with duck and rice. So because the only things that are mentioned here is duck and rice, you assume there's gonna be a lot of duck, but they use the word with, which means that total is gonna have to be 3% minimum. Maybe there's more, maybe you're lucky, but then they wouldn't use those words, right? They would use other words that would have a connotation of that there's more in there. So all of this is really aimed at deceiving you, although they're saying it's a way to protect the consumer, but I, I don't see it that way. And the scariest one of all is when they use the word flavor. You could say something like, I don't know, sacred antelope of the hills of the Himalayas flavor. And how much actually needs to be in there? None. The word flavor means there doesn't actually need to be any in there. It's just the flavor. Maybe it's just like a little part of the aromas. Maybe just something that kind of smells like it. Zero percent required if they use the word flavor. So if you see the word flavor, run. Run as fast as that deer. Run as fast as that sacred holy deer up the Himalayan mountains. Run. You don't want to buy that food. And that's just the front. Oh my God. Now turn your bag around. Turn the bag around. And then what you're seeing is only three things are mandatory legislated. You have the ingredients list from the most, the highest weight to the lowest. Again, pre-production weights. 
so it's misleading there as well because everything is basically dried in the food. And then you have the nutrient information, the guaranteed nutrient profile that has protein, fat, fiber, and energy. Those are the only ones that need to be there. Anything else is just because the company itself chooses to put those there. Uh, but they don't have to in terms of AFCO regulations. And then there's the energy content as well. But the energy content can just be calculated. It doesn't have to have been substantiated with lab reports. So it could be over or underestimated. There also needs to be feeding directions, but there's no rules on how to properly explain feeding directions. So every brand has their different way of explaining it. Some are horrible tables, some are kind of a bit more pictorial and very cute and easier to understand. But all in all, the information that is in there is not verified. As long as it's there, all good. There needs to be the best buy date somewhere on the bag. Usually it's underneath, but it could be in the front or the back. And there needs to be the manufacturer uh, contacts as well. So you need to know the address of where it was manufactured and the brand name as well. Because some brands, are they don't have their own factories. They pay someone else to do it for them. So you should have the address of the manufacturer on the bag because then if there's an issue, they're the ones that you get in touch with. The only thing that is sometimes scrutinized and reviewed by authorities is the nutrients. But again, this is very, very specific on where this food is made. And depending on which state you're from, then that's where you'll know if they're a lot more ruthless and a lot more specific about it, or if they're kind of like, yeah, it's there, looks fine, cheers. See you in a year. See you in a year to make sure that there's something written there, but I'm not gonna verify. So some other, uh, a lot of them being in the Midwest, they are a lot more stringent and they're really, really good at following up and actually asking for lab reports and then comparing. But when it comes to food made all around the world, again, no such regulations exist because AFCO is only legitimized in the States. But don't despair, because like I keep saying, you have a right to know what you feed your pet. So if you're giving your dog or cat whatever diet it is, even if it's fresh, if it's raw, if it's you know commercially prepared, kibbles, canned food, freeze dried, I don't care. You have a right to know what you're feeding, which means you contact them and you ask them for lab reports. You ask them how do they verify that the nutrients on the label are actually what's in the food. And if they don't answer you, move on and then find another brand that will earn your trust. Well, I hope this video helped. Now you have some tips on how to scrutinize packaging and ignore all of the marketing noise because nothing on here matters except the ingredients and the nutrition. At the end of the day, that's what you're feeding. You're not really feeding the brand name or anything else. You're feeding the food itself. Subscribe, like this video, follow us on Instagram and TikTok, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.